Okay, so here we are starting off the first video in our new series. This is going to be a transmission swap. And we've got a donor car, which is a 2001 Elantra. Yeah. And uh, this, this has a transmission, good, good auto transmission with 63,000 kilometers. And then we've got a, the white car, which is an 05 uh, Elantra. And uh, so our plan here is we've got the, the parts car on the hoist. We're going to raise it up here in a minute. We're doing some prep work under the hood first before we get it up high in the air. We got the hood off and uh, we're taking the battery out and the airbox. And, the airbox. and there's going to be a little bit more preliminary work that we're going to do around the engine bay. And once we've done what we can from the top, we'll raise it up and do some work on the bottom. We also have a two ton engine crane that uh, we'll be using to, to hoist the whole engine and transmission out as a, as a common unit. And so as we, as we go along in various stages, we'll stop and then I'll take a, take a, a 30 second update video on, on each of the parts that we took out. So here we are. At this stage, we've taken out much of the wiring harness or disconnected much of the wiring harness from the sensors. Since this is the donor car, any of the wire harnesses, the, the connectors that wouldn't release, we kind of cut them off because we're not reusing the harness. And uh, took out, you know, brackets and bolts and that sort of thing. We've got both fans removed from the, uh, the rad area, and now we're going to take the rad out next. All right, so we're further along, and this is our, our shift bracket here. And uh, so 12 mil bolt here and two 12 mil bolts here that hold the bracket in place. So that's up and out of the way. And we're kind of getting to the end of, of all the wire harness and all the ground straps are off. There's one here. Uh, there's one on the other side over by that shock mount over there, strut mount, and um, brake booster was disconnected. What else we got here? Fuel line. Fuel line. How'd you do the fuel line? That was from underneath. The fuel uh, line is right here, two oh, bolts. Okay, two bolts for the fuel line, yep, right in there. And was it under pressure? No, because the gas <laughs> line leaks. We got a fuel leak, so there's no pressure on it. Um, it we're gonna there would be if... There would be? Yeah. So, so how, do you, how do you properly bleed it? You basically wiggle it free and like make sure you have safety glasses on because it and may right. spray a little bit okay all right and then uh brake booster and master cylinder we're going to try to leave in place to see if we can get the engine and transmission out as a combined unit with that left in place because on the good car we want to leave it in place so we'll try it here what else have we done um anything around the front remove the power steering pump yep. power steering pump is off so it's just a couple of bolts to hold that guy on. Yep. Uh, I've taken okay. off all the cables for the alternator. Okay. Yep. As well as a few sensors that are in front of the block and the catalytic converter. And right now I have the manifold removed. All right. But it still has to be undone underneath. And is that a flex pipe down there? Yes, it is. But you don't want. You still want to undo it, even though it's a flex pipe, right? Well, you. Yeah. It's not meant to flex enough to take that off. Well. Anyway. Even even so, one of these is worth quite a bit of money. Right. So I'm not going to give it to the scrapyard if I can repurpose it, reuse it, right. or sell it again. Okay. But to get the engine out, we don't want to just pull that, pry that forward, right? No, no. Okay. It would be a lot easier if we didn't have to fight it. Smart. Yep. Right. Well, and um, we got the uh, the cruise control module off right here. That was just a few bolts. Pretty easy to take off. And this is another ground strap I told you about. So uh, we're what's getting next? to the point of putting it up and taking the wheels off. Okay. Um, we also have to undo the the belt for the AC compressor down here. Yeah. And we're, we're, what we're going to try to do is remove the compressor from the block and tie it out of the way in order to not require draining the AC. Right. Right. Okay, and again, you don't care about this car so much. It's more about not draining the AC on your good car, right? Correct, but yeah. we'll learn here. We'll learn here, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Okay, carrying on, we got our throttle cables released. That cable came around all the way around here, clipped in these two clips, and disappears in the firewall. And then we took off the, well, we cut the injector harness because uh, we just left it on there and uh, we're now working on the power steering compressor now the uh, air conditioner compressor to get rid of that guy so we took off this axis cover here on the passenger side wheel well there were two 10 mil bolts one up here and one up here 
and uh, the next stage is to loosen this 14 mil bolt right here on the compressor pulley and then there's a 12 millimeter adjuster bolt right there and as you tighten that it draws the pulley away from the belt we've raised the vehicle up about uh, waist height now got the wheels off it got the axle nuts off um, one of the axles pushed in just really easy with my hand you can push the axle through it's not seized up this one is seized so we're going to look at a little technique to free that guy up so the Kevin put the nut on the axle to prevent the end of the axle from mushrooming and he's got a, a hammer gun here and that's all it took. That's all it took. Yeah. What do you got here, Kevin? What kind of machine is this? Anyway, Ingersoll range. Yeah, that's a serious one. I've got one, but it's like half the size of that. And I don't know. If, mm. I don't have an attachment like this with that much mass. Mm, okay. Yeah. So what I would have done, which wouldn't have been this effective, I, I might have tried to put a puller on it. I've got it's probably a three or two jaw puller. I would have put a puller on it. If this and, wouldn't have done it like that, we would have advanced to a puller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well that went pretty easy. Yep. I actually think, so you wouldn't have hit that. Uh, the other thing I would have probably done is put that on there and then given that a smack with a two pound or a three or four or five pound maul, just not trying to destroy it, but trying to free it up. And you don't like that because well, even even with that nut on there. I, I, I find just the vibration that's from enough. this kind of shakes rust yeah. loose. Okay, yeah, that's quite a rig. All right. And uh, so, so. Here's a demonstration. Yeah, wow, lots of crap fell on the floor. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to try and get those axles out of the transmission before we lift it, or before we pull it. And um, we thought we'd, we'd release the hub using these bolts, but they're too rusted, and uh, we didn't want to break them off and leave the car immobilized. So we're now going to look at ball joints. Maybe we can free up one of the ball or the ball joint, swing the hub out. So folks, here we are on the pasture side trying to get the ball joint off, the lower ball joint, and uh, the nut itself was covered in shale rust. We thought it was a 19 mil nut, and after hitting it with that impact hammer and all the rust fell off, it really looks like a 17 mil now. I don't know whether it was 19, and now it's, all that's left is the 17. Anyway, we started turning it. It freed up pretty easily, which is great, um, but after we got the nut 80% off, the uh the ball joint started spinning inside of the uh well the, the, stem. The, the stem started spinning so to counteract that we wanted to drive the ball joint up into the socket a bit further so i've got it on the hoist now and we put a jack stand underneath the ball joint and then lowered the vehicle and the hoist down so that there's some weight on that uh on the bottom of that ball joint and that allowed us to turn the nut off the rest of the way so here we are on the uh driver's side and uh yeah, you can see that nut is completely caked with shale. So we'll just give this guy a little touch up here. Yeah, look at that. There's a pretty nut under there. And now let's have a look at it. Okay, so we uh, popped the lower ball joint out. And uh, I was prying right at the ball joint, between the ball joint and this, uh, this lower arm here. Or between the hub and the lower arm to get the ball joint out. But Kevin showed me a better way. The pry, the pry spot, the best pry spot is along this lower a arm against the frame so that he's got a light, nice long bar on there and when he did that it dropped the whole a arm and uh the ball joint just fell out so we pushed the uh push the axle through the cv joint through and um now we're going to pop it out of the transmission there would be a little bit of fluid loss but probably not too much right because we get the transmission drained anyway and this is kind of a quick motion and then and then swing the hub out of the way and the axle comes out in your hand that's actually this little clip is what makes it hard to lock come out. into the transmission and what yeah. you do is you pry here and you you pop it yeah and how a quick pop how come they don't shatter like they're they must be they're spring steel yeah okay what about the ring the uh the tone one. ring tone ring on the other side there's a wheel speed sensor because yeah. this doesn't have abs oh, there's okay. only a, there's only one a tone side? ring on one side oh okay uh, that's a speed sensor basically okay and what happens is the rust builds up and it splits the tone ring and it shatters and comes apart and thus giving you check engine codes uh weird shifting patterns on your transmission oh wow okay 
so that could be your problem if you have issues with your transmission shifting funny or and does this interface to the speedometer or is that a different sensor? Uh, no, but this doesn't do anything with the speedometer, but it cross-references with yeah. the speed of the car and, and the uh, transmission module and everything, and it will set a code eventually. Okay, interesting. Well, thanks. All right, so we're under here. Trying to take off this catalytic converter and uh, the... The nuts started off as 19 millimeter socket. Yeah, we started that. The way. last one we took off was 14 millimeter. Yeah, we're pounding on a 15 mil socket right now. And I had given up the uh, 15 mil socket was rounding. And it's just, doing it on just this like one that too. And so I'd given up thinking I had to cut it and grind it, but the voice of experience among us said. Uh, Try using this air chisel, air hammer, and it uh, freed everything up and it got the stud backed right out, so it worked out great. Normally it's the nut that comes off, but. Yeah. Okay, well, it's definitely past the 15 stage. Oops, excuse me. done so we got that off and uh, it's great no cutting or grinding or heating even uh, normally it doesn't separate so easily normally it's seized and I have to whack it a few times to get it to separate yeah but as you can see even the ear yeah, it's is finished here okay so here we are underneath we've taken off the rear um, rear motor mount it was a bit of a tough job to get these 17 millimeter bolts out of the transmission. I guess it's right rear transmission now. But uh, we needed to take that out so that the transmission will clear the sway bar and or stabilizer bar um, because it would have banged on the mount right here on the top. So anyway, we got that guy out and we got the front mount, front mount out, uh, the bolt out and the um, what else do we take out? We've the got exhaust. The, the exhaust, the manifold, uh, the flex pipe. We were careful with the O2 sensors to not damage those. And uh, this came out pretty easy. All we had to do from underneath the vehicle is take hold of the catalytic converter and kind of move it. Initially, we moved it towards the driver's side to, to cause the driver's side of the manifold to move forward. And then once we lowered it below something, I forget now, the oil dipstick tube, uh, then we moved the catalytic converter towards the uh, driver's side, which caused the driver's side manifold to move forward and clear what the alternator, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and since we are um, taking this transmission out, we wanted to drain the oil, and you want to put new transmission fluid in anyway, right? right? So this should ideally be changed with every time you take out the plug. Mm -hmm. And when you remove the plug, you'll find a big sludgy amount of. Metal uh, mud. <laughs> metal mud, basically. Uh, this is the remnants of it uh, that I wiped off. It looked like quite a bit to me, but you didn't see it. It, it actually it ends bad. up looking like anti seize, like the yep. aluminum anti seize, yep. but blackened. Um, that's metal from inside the transmission. But when you do this, as you can see, the gasket's supposed to be round, it's missing corners and stuff. Yeah. And this is one thing that I actually forgot. I'm going to have to make do with either this gasket or the one, one from the car that has the bad transmission. The gasket that's on that is approximately a year old, so I should be Probably okay. Good. Yep. Okay. So and, and also, folks, to uh, something I forgot to tell you, to make this car mobile again, even after we take the transmission and the engine out, we put the ball joints back in place. These ball joint nuts were bare to get off, but we got them on a few threads, and that'll hopefully hold the, the uh, lower A-arm in place. Uh, even after the wheels are on it and the weights on the wheels because we do want to we definitely want to be able to roll this car around after we get the the important parts out of it um, We're working on the AC. Oh, 
Oh yeah, oh that's right, you took the compressor off, right? I've unbolted two of the bolts. Okay. We've gotten rid of the belt. Yep. Uh, the belt was finished anyway, so we just cut it. Yep. Um, I've undone two lower bolts, but to get to the upper ones, I have to lower the car to get to ah, it. Ah, okay. All right. And then I'm hoping to be able to support the compressor close to the firewall with some mechanics wire. Yeah. In order to save myself from refilling the AC. Okay, so we're getting further along. We get the hoist set up, and uh, we've got our engine leveler here, which is going to be handy, but I don't know if you need it in every case. There's a little bracket right on the side of the head that we can use, and then another one over on this side of the head. And uh, even though we're only gripping by the engine, it should still be all right. We'll probably end up fiddling with this adjuster so that more weight is being lifted by this strap than with the other just to keep the engine and transmission level. Uh, we took off the engine mount on this side. This is the driver's side front. And there are a bunch of 17 mil bolts and then a few 14, uh, no, 9 16 you said? Uh, 14 mil. 14 mils, okay. Um, the interesting thing to get that mount out on the, if you, if you look in the rear wheel well, or sorry, the driver's side front wheel well, see those two shiny new spots right there? There were rubber plugs there and uh, you could just peel them out with a standard screwdriver. In this case, we just pushed them in and now they're in a never, never land there. So those were the uh, 14 mil bolts. So that, that went through there and there. Yep, right there and there. So we pulled that mount out and it's out of the way. And then on this side, um, you didn't have to, you don't have to do any work underneath the fender. Uh, there was a bracket here. We had 17 that mil, like that. Uh, yeah, 17 mil bolt on this guy. And then three 14 mils. Yep. And uh, that bracket's out of the way. Um, the other thing we did since the last uh, recording is we've got the the uh, compressor for the air conditioning just suspended there. We took the four bolts off that hold that compressor onto the block. It's just suspended there with some wire to hold it up. And this is the uh, experiment to make sure that we can take the engine out without discharging the air conditioning system. So we're now to the stage, I think, Kevin, aren't we, where we're going to start the lift? Correct. And it's only a matter of time whether we see if we pass the master cylinder right. or not. Right. So yeah, we hope to be able to there get around are, that master there cylinder. Are some things we can do to make it a little easier. Okay. Um, by eliminating some of the objects. Yeah. So that the motor can come as close to the front as possible. Yep, makes sense. You don't Making sure if you have a good car not to puncture this because then your AC will not work right. at all. Right, right on. Okay. And as you can see from this one, even the rad support mount is rotten and gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, well, let's see what happens. There may be some wires left over we missed. Looks pretty good so far. It's always good to tuck things as we go. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be stressing this uh, fuel line a little bit. We'd um, want want to watch that on your car. Oh yes, yes. Um, it might be under the way, but yeah, it, it's flexible enough. We'll just watch it. Although you're going to be, we hope to drop on your we're car. We're hoping anyway. to do the opposite. Of yeah. Way. So yeah, so this is a donor car. We uh, we needed to pull the engine anyway because oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang up right here. There, there keep going. Go. Yep. So we're going to pull the engine and the transmission because we want the transmission for the uh, good car, and plus the, I think we're yeah we're doing okay. Uh, and we we have a buyer for the engine, so the whole thing is coming out, and we uh, for that reason we're lifting lifting the engine straight up like this. But in the good car, we're going to see if we can drop the transmission, and that will just save a ton of work with sensor, electrical, and wiring harnesses, wiring harness, possibilities of breaking things, starter, and all kinds of stuff. And uh, this uh, transmission looks like it's been out and sealed before Kevin that wasn't factory right no that's factory that what color orange on transmission what? is factory okay well that looks pink to me but well, orangey pink whatever. okay <laughs> sorry yeah it looks like we're doing okay this is so I'll zoom out a little bit actually I'll just set the camera down there's 
there's some remaining fluids that are coming out as we go, but... Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What's that? Yeah, I'm running out of water. Let's see. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's no big deal. That's for the O2 sensor. It's just a plastic bracket. If I had a trim fork, I'd just pull it. <sighs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so yeah, we you know we got all the wires disconnected except for one. It was the uh, harness for one of the O2 sensors. The rear sensors. O2 sensor is strapped to the uh, the support for the intake manifold. There we go. Okay. And now we look like we're in the water and we're ready to go. Yeah. We're still, can you put something on that? Because that is. So, folks, what we did, we just uh, we kept having fluid leaking out of the head where this uh, where this coolant went to the heater cooler and the he heater core. The heater core. And so we just looped the hose around so it'll just stay in there. And we, we cut off a section from the car because yeah. we don't really need it. And we're still, oh no, that's good. That fuel line's just free. I think we're, we're looking good there. We're completely out. Okay. Okay, folks, we're here again with an update and we are now in the process of separating the transmission from the engine. We've got the starter out and uh, there's the flywheel shown below where the starter used to be. And one thing Kevin pointed out is this little plastic cover right here. That needs to come out to expose enough of the flywheel so you can get the three bolts, three or four bolts to hold the flywheel to the uh, to the transmission. Well, you explain that, I will get <laughs> And the other component here that's of interest is at the end of the crank, there's a 22 mil bolt. So that's what's used to rotate the engine until those flywheel bolts appear. And uh, only rotate the engine one way, right Kevin? Well, if you rotate the other way, chances are you'll start undoing the bolt, the bolt. So you may as well go clockwise. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's one there. And then you expose it like that. Yeah. Okay. And you find the appropriate. I believe that's 17. It's a funny looking head on that. Yeah, they have to keep them very shallow. I believe it's 17. Yes, it is. So 17 mil bolt holding the uh, engine to the to the flywheel. We're going to go ahead and take out those three or four bolts, and then uh, then be ready to unbolt all the transmission housing bolts. Actually, Kevin's already got them out. All the ones near the bottom. We've got what two left on top, Kevin? Just these, these two. Just keep it together until we're ready to. Yeah. Work. 